Hello and welcome. My name is Kesha Palm and I'm the artistic producer of the Paprika Theater Festival. And my name is Julia Dixon and I am the general manager of the festival. The play excerpt that you were about to experience was developed and presented at the Paprika Theater Festival. Paprika is a youth-led, award-winning performing arts company offering paid hands-on professional development opportunities to emerging artists, 18 to 30, in the greater Toronto area. Today and for over 23 years, Paprika operates from offices, theaters, coffee shops, houses, apartments, bedrooms, and kitchen tables all across Digerundo. We acknowledge the ancestral lands and waterways of the Anishinaabe, including the treaty holders of this territory, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee peoples from the Six Nations Confederacy of the Grand River, Wendat, and any other nations who cared for the land, acknowledged and unacknowledged, recorded and unrecorded, past, present, and future. Much of Paprika's programming and operations also takes place online. And even now, we are using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many rural and Indigenous communities in order to reach you through this digital presentation. We recognize that the technologies and devices bringing us together while physically apart hold precious materials that come from these lands and have significant carbon footprints that contribute to the changing climates disproportionately affecting Indigenous peoples worldwide. We continue to learn, unlearn, shift perspectives, embody and practice teachings of this land, including the Dish with Once Bloom Wampum Covenant, a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land, and the Seventh Generation Principle, a Haudenosaunee teaching that decisions that teaches the decisions that we make today should protect and safeguard the land and water for seven generations to come. We are so grateful to call this land home. Please enjoy the Paprika Festival Playwrights Unit staged readings, where we celebrate works in process by Dean Vukovic, Willow Martin, and Teja Shane Chung, developed with support from facilitator Bilal Bag from November 2022 to May 2023. The recordings made on May 21st, 2023 at Native Earth Performing Arts Aki Studio in Dugarondo, with equipment provided in kind from Charles Street Video and Theatre Pass Marai, and featuring lighting design by Paprika Design Lab participant Max Cameron Fearon. Yay. Yay! This presentation would not be possible without our lead lab and digital presentation partner at the Stratford Festival, the partners we just listed, and the community of donors and partners and staff who keep Paprika running. If you would like to join the community of supporters who make this work possible, you can become a monthly donor or make a one-time donation following the link below or by heading to our website, paprikafestival.com support. Now get comfortable. Settle in and please enjoy. Hey, my name is Willow Martin. I use all pronouns and I am the playwright of Superman Always Wins, a play that you'll be hearing an excerpt of today. Uh, this is an autistic superhero story. It's a play about an autistic person named Al whose caretaker is not doing too hot. It's a story about how they exist in a world that isn't built to hold them inside of it content uh, that might pop up for you while you're watching is uh, simulated violence, bright lights, loud noises, depictions of autistic meltdown as a result of sensory overload and or overwhelm, um, uh, unintentional misgendering and dead naming, illness and discussion of illness. And uh, that's about everything. So I hope you enjoy this reading of Superman Always Wins. Thanks so much. Fortress of Solitude. Inside stands a Superman action figure in front of a computer, bruised and battered. Al watches as the scene plays out in his mind. To all remaining members of the Justice League, this is Superman speaking. Is there anyone out there? To all remaining members of the Justice League, this is Superman speaking. The Fortress of Solitude has been breached. Is there anyone out there? To all remaining members of the Justice League, this is Superman speaking. A doomsday action figure appears. I... I'm so sorry, why? They had nothing to do with it. You... You came for me, so why? You... Fine, I'm sorry, Lois. If it's a fight you want, get up. I know you can hear me, get up. You made a mistake. 
the Fortress of Solitude, Superman? You think it's lonely out here in all this snow and sheets and sheets of ice? You would think I'm alone. I am never alone, even now. In the weight of my fist, you put them there. Can you hear them? It's never a question of if. When you're Superman, it's not that complicated, but then Beetle, Booster, Jimmy, Lois, Ma, and Pop. It became a question of how. But now, tell him I'm sorry. Stop lying to yourself. That's not what happened. These fantasies of yours, Fortress of Solitude? <laughs> it's time to grow up already and act your age, Superman. Enough, we're past speaking, you- Me? Oh, Clark. Are you slow? You know what you did. I'll remind you then. A family at home, or I suppose that's what they used to be, until Superman showed up and saved the day. Shut up! You don't know what you're talking about. Your words, you, you, you did this. All of this. Enough tricks, Doomsday. Enough tricks, Clark. I'm sorry, but it's time to face the truth. You did this, not me. The only reason I'm here right now is because of you. You are the only reason it turned out like this. You don't know anything about me. I am Superman. You and Superman always have said enough. Now listen, neither of us asked for this, but it's time to take responsibility. She's sick, El. I wonder what happens next. What happens when she needs help? Who's gonna help her? Look at you, you can't even help yourself. You never change. She needs help and what do you do? Tough day? Yeah, me too. Listen, I get... Oh, I know it's not easy. Getting up every day, putting on the mask, playing the part, doing the things you have to do. It's, it gets tiring. Look, whenever I get, whenever things get tough, well, to be honest, it's not the, the cheers, the accolades, it's not Ma or Pa or, or even Lois. I, I love them, I do, but sometimes it's hard. Alien, different. Things weren't like this on Krypton. I mean, sure, there was hurt and horror, but there was also this sense of community here, well, <laughs> Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter, but I get it, I get it, I do. You can't always be Superman, <laughs> fighting harder every day for people who don't know you, who don't want to know you, it's tiring. Some days I can't do it. Some days I sit in the office at the Bugle and I hide myself away from the world. Can some other hero do it? No, well, there's no hero here, maybe tomorrow. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is some days I need Clark Kent, some days they need Superman, and some days every day I'm just that little alien boy alone in a sea of stars, drowning. But I never stop swimming because one day I may just reach the surface and all that loss, all that hurt, maybe it's just a refracted dream drowning in the pressure of the water too. Trust me, Al, you don't want to perform CPR in a long dead dream. <laughs> it's time to get up while the water's still shallow. Hello? Yes. Me again. Uh, listen, we're here for Martha. Sorry. Just a second. Okay, let me pull that right up for you. Right, one second, sure. Sorry, is- Here she is, room 10. Should be in the doctor right now. Are you two immediate family? No, um, I'm not. Uh, yes, right here is the um, immediate family. Hello, my name is Elle. I am Martha's emergency contact. Hi Elle, nice to meet you. Hello, it's nice to meet you too. Pleasure is all mine. Let me just... It says here, the contacts of Penelope? Oh, uh, well, that's... No, I... It's short for Penelope. Out is. Oh, that's a new one. Well, great. Then you can <laughs> fill this out, and when the doctor's back, I'll call you up, okay? Thanks, hon. Are you... okay? 
you don't look okay, Al. Is there anything I can do, or... Stop. Okay. Did that bush have a comic section? You wish she's out. Sorry, right, bush does bush things. Guess we're still not there yet. Human priorities are so backwards. Well, don't worry, I won't spoil it. But it does remind me of when Gandalf fell and then everyone went all slow-mo, like, Gandalf! But they still had to go, and there's this, like, um, this, like, multiple panels all dedicated to showing how Superman... Oh, shit, sorry, I didn't... But I didn't really spoil anything, but... Um, I thought it was cool and that you might want to know, Sam, and... Sam, please, I, I know you like... But I, I can't. Oh. Okay. What? I th Stop it, Al! Sam, I can't. You don't I don't understand. I never understand, right? No, Sam, that's not what I... You know that's not what I mean. It's just, well, my, my brain works differently, you know? Right. But just because, Al, you are autistic does not mean that I can't understand you. Yes, it does. Sometimes it does. No. Yeah. Actually, Al, you're right. I don't understand. Why someone would run away from home, from a sick and dying Martha, this person who gives and gives and gives, why you would run away from that and for what? Bush in the hospital parking lot? When you knew that she wasn't doing well. And she needed you. I didn't just run away, Sam. I couldn't stay. There was nothing else I could do. It, it wasn't that simple. It wasn't as easy as you make it sound. Okay, sure. So let's say it was hard. Like pulling teeth. Like, like walking backwards, out, right out of your body and into the ether. Hard. Impossible. What then? Was it easy when we had to go looking for you in the cold, like a knife in the dark, stabbing at us all the time? I'm not even. We're friends, Al. But friends shouldn't leave other friends alone in the dark with a... Wait. I had to carry Martha here. Carry! When my grandmother died, I couldn't even be in the room. I was at home, Al, watching fucking Boromir get riddled with arrows and Gandalf falling, just falling. It seemed more real at the time. Blood, Al. Martha's blood. You left me with this. Your easy did this, so what? Or is this easy too? I'm sorry, Sam. I didn't, this isn't what I meant to do, and, but, but it, it did happen, and I'm here now. I'm here now. M Martha, what do you want me to do? Look, Sam, it's horrible what happened to you, but I can't say that there was literally no other option. I could not stay in that house for a second longer, I would have died. I would have died. It felt like this song inside of me just welling up and welling up and soon it's going to overflow and I don't know what happens then, but it feels like death, Sam. It's not funny or fun or wacky all the time. I have feelings too, Sam. I'm not a robot that acts the way you want it to. If I did, I would self-destruct because no robot can handle that many requests. The same tax error. Boom! Yeah. I ran away. I didn't tell you because I didn't want to. Because I knew you would be like this. It's not the way you talk to me sometimes, or the way you treat Martha, or the way you forget literally everything and everyone around you when it's Superman time, or whatever. Those things, fine. It's just, why? When you know fully well what you're capable of and who you are, why do you disrespect yourself like this? Why do you push away everyone that tries to help you? Because when did I ever ask for your help? You didn't have to. I'm your friend, Elle. Then you should know that I don't need your help. I don't need Martha's help. I don't need you to clean the dishes when I would have got to them after you left the kitchen, or to clean my room when I had just spent the entire week convincing myself that I could do it, or to worry about my diet and tell me so when I only eat my one food, I'm fine on my own. I can survive goddamn well enough on my own. Stop trying to control me. When did I ever ask to be fucking surveilled like an inmate? Well, well, <laughs> well, well, but you, my parents, when I, you can't let this define you, Al. It is literally what is happening, defining this moment. 
Sam, it is. Okay, get out. Leave. I'm done with this conversation. I'm just trying to help you. God damn it, Sam. Aren't you listening to me? Or if you can't listen, then read my fucking lips. I am not a child. I don't need your fucking help. Really? Sam, it's time to get some perspective. It's time to open up your eyes and see. Look at me. Look me in the eyes when I talk to you. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, honey, everything okay? Okay, great. Well, we're ready in the room if you are. I'm sorry, hun, immediate family only. You can wait out here for now. Come on, she'll be happy to see you. Marcel lies on a hospital bed, unconscious. Martha? Martha, wake up. We're gonna be late for... Sleepyhead. I wonder where you are right now. Wherever you are, can you hear me? What about now? <laughs> Different because, well, they weren't really a child. 
The light had shown him as much, and illuminated in the warm hue of the steady light, it was the truth. It had always been the truth, but lost in the dark void of space, how was the child to know? Every light before had been blinding, and so he had never truly seen, never truly been seen. Immersed in the light of the star, he flexed the muscles he had never known before. He leaped great heights and bounded great distances. He soared through the cosmos with the light in his heart, and when he finally reached that planet called Earth, they named him Superman, for he was just like them, and more. They said that he was faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, and able to leave tall buildings in a single bound. They said that he was special. They said that he was good. He protected them, and they protected him. And everything was right. Stop lying to yourself. That's, That's not what happened. These fantasies of yours, fortress of solitude, it's time to grow up already and act your age, Superman. Enough. We're past speaking. You... Me? Oh, Penelope. Are you slow? You know what you did. I'll remind you then. A family at home, or I suppose that's what they used to be, until Superman showed up and saved the day. Shut up! You don't know what you're talking about. Your words. You did this. All of this. Enough tricks, Martha. Enough tricks, Penelope. I'm sorry, but it's time to face the truth. You did this, not me. The only reason I'm here right now is because of you. You were the only reason it turned out like this. You don't know anything about me. I am Superman, and Superman always... You have said enough. Now listen, neither of us asked for this, but it's time to take responsibility. Elle is shivering, and in a spasm of movement, rips the covers off Martha. She is shocked awake. She scans the room quickly and sees Elle. She is groggy from medication. She moves slowly. Her body is alien to her. Elle, what's going on? Are you okay? Hey, hey, breathe. Breathe with me. Stay with me. Remember where you are, who you are. Can you name three things in the room? Any three things? You, the bed, the floor. Great, good job. Let's do three more. Me, the door, that, that blanket. That's great, that's... <sighs> <coughs> hey, can I, can I tell you a story? <laughs> Careful, don't give yourself whiplash like that, look. <laughs> Remember this? Yeah, me too. You were young and so were we, and none of us knew what we were doing. We made so many mistakes and said so many things. I did so many things I regret, but this, you really nailed it. <laughs> no, really. I look just like that orange skin and all of a kind of the vat of acid I fell into. <laughs> Wrong comic, that's Batman. Right, right, that's Batman. So then I'm, oh, but I thought you had an answer to everything. Just joking. Hey, listen. Why did you stop drawing anyways? Oh, Pen. I know. But it's not your fault. It's not. This would have turned out like this no matter what. You. <coughs> <coughs> changing your name to L. 
like Kalel, like the name of Superman, his alien name, the one his parents named him. Come here, like Kalel. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. You are perfect. Actually, something's missing. Try this. She grabs the bed rag off the ground and ties it around Elle's neck like a superhero cape. There. Looking super Elle. <laughs> now, was that all? I'm pretty tired, all things considered. <laughs> For Sam basically had to carry me here. Great. Mind helping me, Superman? Thanks, Superman. All in a day's work. <laughs> Martha? No, no, don't. I, you can't. Help, someone help. Stay with me, hold on. Don't die. You can't leave me. Tough day. Yeah. Me too. Listen, I know it's not easy. It doesn't get any easier, ever. In fact, it only gets more difficult. Getting up every day, talking, seeing, eating, being. You learn, you grow, adapt, and you're punished for it. You become other when you refuse to see yourself stuck within the space they left for you. The trash they left for you. What? That's what you did, right? I don't blame you. Why should you stay in a place that is repulsed by your very existence? Why should you have to be bound and fettered by their words and their looks, the stories they tell about you? When is it your turn? You could, if you wanted to, have a turn. Would you want to? Can I tell you a story? I know the words they say. The things they pin to me as they examine and dissect me, dismember and reassemble me in ways more pleasing. I know why they do it. I hear them as they tell me why they do it. It makes sense. I'm wrong, evil, bad, destructive, irresponsible, careless. I don't have the capacity to do things right, and when I try, I just mess them up. They know this. Because in every story I have ever known, I have been the rot. The hot fucking nail that drives slowly through the foot until you just can't stand it anymore. Until you scream out, scream out loud, there's a hot fucking nail driving through my fucking foot, help! Please help me! And sometimes they catch it just in time and drive me out. And I'm praised for being the right hot fucking nail for this wrong time, which is forgivable, but sometimes it's too late. Even if they get the nail out, some fouler thing has already bitten down and taken its place. Infection, wrong nail, wrong time, big difference. In this one, I become an icon of their hatred, the root of everything bad that has ever happened to them. I have to be the infection spread from me. Where else? But did you ever stop to wonder why they didn't just clean out the fucking wound when they were done with me? Or why they couldn't watch out for hot fucking nails as they lumbered around clumsily? Or why they build their buildings in such a way that they never seem to need or want the hot fucking nails they produce, except to teach those feet how not to go near hot fucking nails on the ground? Or why there are hot fucking nails just littered around waiting to be stepped on in the first place? Hmm? Even children know how to clean up their own mess. But do you know, I actually prefer that telling. Wrong, alone, alien, different. They would think that it is lonely. Doomsday. A cage of words that keeps me locked in conflict with everything they want. Everything 
they think I should want for myself. But they're wrong. From out here, I get to see it all. And it is not real. It's all fake. Watch. With distance comes perspective, comes control. When you can see, when you watch, everything they do, it all starts to make sense. The patterns, the conventions. It's easy, see? When you step far enough away, you don't ever have to miss anything ever again. You get to be the one writing the story, and no stupid fucking foot will ever step on you again. Would you like to try? It's fun.